Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the brand new Bloomboro meta. Today we're taking a look at blue red otters as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, but I didn't want to build just any otter deck. I went with Otter Storm, featuring four copies of Storm Splitter as one of our payoffs, a 4 mana 1 4 with haste, saying whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a token that's a copy of Storm Splitter, and we have to exile all of those tokens at the beginning of the next end step. So Storm Splitter can potentially give us this extra exponential growth of creatures that will keep adding up as long as we can keep chaining together enough instants and sorceries and then we can potentially just win the game in one big turn. Now we can also potentially trigger Storm Splitter in the opponent's end step and then the copy we create will persist throughout our next turn since it only goes away at the beginning of the next end step so that's another neat little trick that can sometimes come in handy. And then another creature that plays very well with Storm Splitter is the Valley Floodcaller, a 3 mana 2-2 two two with flash so we can play it in the opponent's turn as well, saying we can cast non-creature spells as though they had flash as well, and whenever we cast a non-creature spell, all our otters will get plus one plus one until end of turn, and we also get to untap them. And untapping them is especially nice if we have a bunch of convoke spells in our deck, which are instants and sorceries in this case, that let us tap creatures to help pay for their cost. So in the case of Stoke the Flames, we could tap just four creatures, including maybe some copies of Storm Splitter, to help cast stoke the flames to deal four damage to any target and then if we also have a flood caller in play we'll immediately get to untap all of those creatures we tapped so we essentially got to cast or stoke the flames for free which is where we can potentially set up that one hit ko out of nowhere with flood caller and storm splitter and then a meeting of minds is very similar this one draws two cards and it does require a blue mana so we won't be able to cast it completely for free if we just have storm splitter in play but usually we'll have some other blue creature hanging out or we can just tap one blue mana in addition to tapping three creatures that can also work so that's usually our combo turn storm splitter with flood caller and then a bunch of convoke spells and other card draw to string together enough of these instants and sorceries and then not only do we get additional copies of the storm splitter but we're also pumping up all our creatures with every spell we cast and then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we do need a little bit of early interaction to survive aggro, so four copies of Shock can also target the opponent directly if we just need to burn them out. Then four copies of Storm Chaser's Talent is actually quite useful here, making a blue-red otter token with prowess when we play it, and that otter token can also help tap for Convoke, counting both as a blue creature as well as a red creature, depending on which Convoke spell we need to cast. And then prowess can also of course pick up additional plus one plus one for every non-creature spell we cast. And then leveling up the talent to level 2 also comes up quite often, getting back an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard to our hand. And if we get back one of our convoke spells, we can still potentially cast it for free in the very same turn. And then at a level 3, if we're playing a very grindy matchup, we can also start generating additional 1-1 one -one tokens whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, so that can also be useful against control. And then at 2 mana we've got the Thunder Tramp Trainer, a 1-2 Otter. When it enters we get to look at the top 4 of our library to reveal a non-creature, non-land card. So we can also find our enchantment and then put it in hand. And we can also cast it with Offspring for 6 mana total, in which case we get to trigger that ability twice and get an additional 1-1 one -one version of it. So it can also be decent in those grindier matchups. And then Highway Robbery is another important card for the turn where we combo off, because we can plot it for 1 and a red and keep it in exile until we're ready to cast our storm splitter and then cast a bunch of instants and sorceries in the same turn to try and combo off so being able to essentially store up two mana for a future turn is quite good but of course we can always just cast it from our hand if needed discarding a card or sacrificing a land in the process usually don't mind sacrificing a land if we're planning to win the game at that very same turn so it's not a huge drawback and then we've got the Stormcatch Mentor, a 1-1 with haste and prowess, giving our instant and sorcery spells a 1-mana discount. So it can also make it easier to combo kill the opponent, makes it easier to convoke our Meeting of Minds and Stoke the Flames, as we now only need to tap 3 creatures for it, so it's also quite useful. And then we've got a full set of Pearl of Wisdom, which can potentially be cast for just a single blue mana if we control a Stormcatch Mentor, since it also gets a 1 mana discount if we control an Otter, and then we get to draw 2. So another decent card draw spell to hopefully string together enough instants and sorceries to storm off and kill the opponent. And then our mana base, just 7 islands, 7 mountains, and then our dual lands, which we still have. Now we're not playing any of the lily pad villages, because we actually need blue mana to cast our Storm Chaser talent and some of our card draw spells, so I don't want to risk it by including the village. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does.
Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn one talents. Turn two can either play Mentor or maybe Plot or Robbery. Setting up a sweet turn with a Storm Splitter, hopefully. Yeah, let's uh, cast a Mentor for now. And just cast a one mana robbery instead of needing to plot it. Although plotting a robbery is better if we want to try and combo off with a storm splitter. So we have options here. Could play trainer and then still convoke meeting of minds thanks to the discount from mentor. Opponent may be considering a counter spell. And we missed sadly, that's painful. So a good meeting of minds now to try and hit my land drop, but if her opponent is sitting on a counter spell, I may regret doing so. So let's just pass. Yeah, falling behind on uh, land drops is not ideal. Found Pearl of Wisdom and a third land. Alright, so this turn could go for an end of turn flood caller. Although it's not like I'm gonna win on the spot with a storm splitter, still need more mana or have a few cards in exile. So yeah, still kind of in favor of an end of turn flood caller here. Even though the one mana pearl of wisdom is tempting. Our opponent not doing anything, so maybe they're just building towards a sweeper. And Besa. So right now gains them life and makes two tokens. Doesn't draw them any cards, however. Still pretty good. Now the good news is our opponent's tapped out. Start with a Pearl of Wisdom. And then hoping to find some Convoke cards we essentially get to cast for free. Stoke the Flames is one of them. So we can Stoke the Flames my opponent directly. Could also maybe plot the Robbery and then try and go off next turn with a Storm Splitter, which would be the most fun, admittedly. Hitting my Land Drop is still kind of important there. So we can do that. And we found some. So we can go ahead and attack. And then still Pearl of Wisdom at instant speed but probably just going to plot the robbery. All right, opponent willing to give up Beza, so they might have a sweeper in hand that they're okay casting next turn. So let's cast Pearl. And then let damage happen. So yeah, I'm expecting a board wipe next turn, which is not going to be pretty since Floodcaller is quite useful in comboing off with our Storm Splitter as well. And there's Sunfall. That happens. Could cast a Robbery now just to make use of the discount, but I think we're still more in favor of plotting it to set up Storm Splitter. Another Floodcaller is useful. Can cast that one end of turn maybe. But our opponent's probably not going to tap out anytime soon. Phantom Interference. At least our opponent is tapped out now. Can I do some damage from this position? Play Storm Splitter. Cast a free Highway Robbery. It's probably the starting point. And do I discard or do I sack a land? I might be able to burn the opponent out, so I don't really want to discard shocks. So I'll sack a land. Found another land. So now I want to be able to stoke the flames for free. I can shock the token. Or I can shock my opponent directly, since honestly the token doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. And then we can cast Meeting of Minds with Convoke. And 
can find another Stoke the Flames, so we might have it here. Go face... Go face again. And that's why Stoke the Flames is such a neat combo with Storm Splitter. You get to cast it for free while still making more tokens. So our opponent's at 3, and they'll take another 20 damage here. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Talent on one, plot robbery on two, and then flood caller pairs well with Stoke the Flames. Up against maybe a food deck. Okay, so next turn can uh, flash and flood caller end of turn. Might be blue black control after all. And I see case of the filched falcon, so there's still an artifact sub theme. And if they're also playing hex mage, I have to imagine they're playing with the uh, rotten mouth which requires a lot of random things to be sacrificed to it. So, I don't think my opponent's blocking if I attack. And then end of turn, flash in the Flood Caller. Can maybe ambush the Hex Mage, but I doubt it. Might already see the Rotten Mouth, which is Vanity instead. Okay. So that takes out my token will make it harder to convoke going forward. And we'll see if Hex Mage gets busy. That's a successful ambush. And another case. So next turn they might start turning uh, artifacts into birds. And then I was curious here, so yeah, with a plotted card even though we plotted it a couple turns ago, we still cannot cast it, even though it's a sorcery and Flood Caller lets us cast non-creature spells as though they had flash. So just an important interaction to keep in mind in this deck, I suppose. Another Storm Splitter, not quite what we were hoping for. So could cast a robbery to try and hit my land drop, or I could keep robbery to go off with Storm Splitter in the first place. I think hitting my land drops is still probably worth it. Although robbery kickstarting the storm splitter turn with double stoke the flames could be super useful. So maybe I do just pass the turn, keeping stoke the flames available, as opposed to getting in for two. I suppose that if I cast robbery, I could also maybe hit land drops to get this to level two and get it back. Our opponent's not applying too much pressure. I kind of want to keep the Stoke the Flames for the Storm Splitter turn once again. So I'm not too incentivized to cast it now. Right, found a land, that's good. So I'm gonna just cast a Storm Splitter. Not gonna try and combo yet, since we might be able to uh, untap with more mana first. Although now with a 5-5 dodges for damage. Opponent hits us for 5. And do we get to untap? Another Hex Mage is fine. Our opponent can sack their clue tokens to draw, including Candy Trail gaining 3. And yep, yeah, there's a Viper as we suspected. Sacking some of the roll tokens, and for now I'll lose 4 life, since I'm hoping to just combo right now. Casting another Storm Splitter seems worse than just casting any instant or sorcery. So let's start with Highway Robbery, discarding Storm Splitter, and then I'll be able to Shock to kick things off, double Stoke the Flames, and yeah, hopefully take it from there. So I can discard, I could also sack a land after floating mana. Uh, but I don't think I'll be casting another Storm Splitter. And that's perfect, meeting of minds. 
Don't think I'll be leveling up the talent, but maybe it's still an option here. Let's start with Meeting of Minds. Tapping these for Convoke, untapping them with a Flood Caller. And I did find a Sheevan Reef. So now what I can do is Stoke the Flames with Convoke. Get back, stoke the flames, and then cast three more of them. All essentially for free, since I can tap for Convoke and untap with Flood Caller. Well, this is quite satisfying. So our opponent will be at one before we even attack, and... Place your guesses how much damage we're actually going to deal. Hopefully they let damage through. And there we have it, almost another 200 damage. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Got the shock on one if needed. Turn to maybe play mentor, maybe robbery. Opponent already with a life linking bat. Could be worth shocking to be fair. Although opponent is likely presenting scarier creatures like the deep cavern bat. Although rune lurker can enable some life gain synergies already. So it's a tough call. But I'll uh, pass for now, and now I'll be able to go Mentor plus uh, Pearl of Wisdom next turn. So either plot a robbery or keep up shock. Yeah, let's just uh, plot a robbery, even though there are some two mana creatures I wouldn't mind taking out as soon as possible. Deep Cavern Bat, as well as the one that picks up plus one counters come to mind. But opponent just hits for one. Found our Storm Splitter. So, Mentor into a 1-mana Pearl of Wisdom. Opponent has a removal. And then... Cut down also could have been an answer to Storm Splitter, so good to get out of the way. And Zorlin is next. Probably want to take that out when we get the chance. Stoke the Flame would do it. Yeah, if I go for Storm Splitter now and our opponent can answer it, we're just gonna fall further behind. So I think taking a turn off to Stoke the Flames is probably fine. And then the more mana we have, the better. Zarlin down. Does enable the Rune Lurker to scry one. And Augur with Offspring can help the opponent draw additional cards now, too. Yep, that's a good one. Found a Stoke the Flames. So what's the best I can do here? Play Storm Splitter, cast Robbery, maybe sacking a land, get a second Storm Splitter. I can Shock, get four Storm Splitters, you can Stoke the Flames. So we are doing some things here. I could wait one more turn to maybe go off even more, but I think it's already worth it. Pearl of Wisdom I can't quite cast. So we got rid of both augers. And then I could stoke the flame's face just to make a bunch more storm splitters. Seems worth it. It's uh, sadly not quite lethal here, but yeah, it goes to show how much damage we can come up with out of nowhere thanks to Convoke and some plotted cards. 
And then hopefully Storm Splitter gets another chance next turn with a Pearl of Wisdom. If not, we're kind of an empty here. Opponent with another offspringed auger. Okay, so we get to keep Storm Splitter at least. And Mentor first seems worth it. Although sadly drawn to a bunch of lanes. So, don't have the best of attacks. Possible our opponent would take the damage from a Stormcatch Mentor, since they're afraid of prowess. But I'm not going to risk it. Plus, if we had anything to enable the Mentor, we probably would have cast it before attacking, so the Storm Splitter could go off even more. So yeah, now we just kind of have to hope our opponent either dies to the Augur triggers, which is unlikely, or that we string together more card draw spells to try and combo off, assuming Storm Splitter survives. A Nightmare discards Fire Bluff. That's fine. And to the Deepest Betrayal. That one's more problematic. Alright, Pearl of Wisdom is a good starting point. Find Talent, which, uh, if I level up, can also get something back. So let's say we now Convoke Stoke the Flames, tapping all of my creatures. I can still level up and then get back a Stoke the Flames. Then, thanks to the discount from Mentor, I can still cast it. Although I will have to tap Mentor itself. So is it actually going to benefit me to cast Stoke with Convoke? I would basically get four Storm Splitters, so that's eight damage as opposed to just six from attacking. So I might be better off getting a card draw spell for next turn. Can make it a Pearl of Wisdom. Or Stoke to go face next turn to try and burn them out after they take a bit more damage from Augur. But don't want to count on that. So I think I still go Pearl. Could have also gotten Stoke just to take out an Augur. But we'll see where this leads. Bones at 4. But they can gain 1 with a Ruin Lurker at least. Sadly, a Deep Cavern Bat can take our Pearl of Wisdom now. Although if we find removal, we'll get it back. So yeah, just gotta hope we don't draw land or some of our lower impact creatures. But any card draw spell or removal could be pretty exciting here. And there's always a small chance our opponent loses to themselves. As this channeler starts picking up plus one counters times two. So they have ample blockers. And next turn they can gain even more life back with the uh, Fortress as well. Valley Floodcaller, I'm afraid, is not going to do it here. Yeah, we got close. Again, that Deep Cavern Bat probably sealed the deal for them. So all I can do is, I guess, uh, level this up and hope our opponent dies to Augur Triggers. But at 5 life that seems unlikely, so there's no advantage to attacking. We got a 1 and a 0, so opponent survives, and they should be able to win the game here. So yeah, close one. Had a pretty sweet turn with a Storm Splitter and Stoke the Flames. I guess our opponent still has to fear Stoke the Flames, since we could cast it with Convoke, but then our opponent would have been dead already. Our opponent realizes they can attack all out. And yeah, we're certainly dead here. GG's. On to the next one.
Okay, we're on the play. Our hand could use some card draw, but for now we can keep. A Valley Flood Caller into a Stoke the Flames. Put in black red, could be the aggro build. Nope, the rest. Well, they can take my shock. I'm not gonna cast it since then they just take Stoke the Flames. So it's a more controlling deck. If they have discard and removal, it's gonna be pretty tricky to combo off. But Highway Robbery is a good starting point. Charming Scoundrel can make a treasure. We don't have the best answers to an opposing Shieldred, since we deal 4 damage and not 5. And Pearl of Wisdom is nice, but maybe we can uh, cast it on the cheap with a Flood Caller in play. So we'll pass. I'm sure our opponent will have removal at the ready for the first Flood Caller, but have to get through those. So I'm not going to try and ambush the Scoundrel. I see Infamous Cruel Claw. That one we can stoke the flames. Assuming there's no cutdown, which there might be. Alright, point's gonna duress to take Stoke, leaving us with a Pearl of Wisdom, which we can cast at instant speed thanks to the Flood Caller as well. And we found another Stoke, alright. So, I guess for now I can uh, just stay put. Had I main phase Stoke, I could have attacked for 3 last turn, but I'll just try and hold off the Scoundrel instead. So that worked. Get to untap. Okay, so... Am I in a hurry to play another Flood Caller? I think we can just uh, Pearl of Wisdom. And take it from there. And then maybe go tap land attack. Waiting on casting the robbery until we maybe find a storm splitter. Or more creatures to pump with a flood caller's ability. Coiling rebirth gets back cruel claw, although just a one copy since it is legendary. Okay, so we need to try and find more answers, although now Flood Caller double blocking could also be a way to do it. So, could still attack. And then pass a turn. And then set up a double block. Can just cast Flood Caller, play the talents, and go for robbery. At this point, maybe discarding the Mentor, since I wouldn't mind leveling up the Talent, so having more lands available is useful. And any Convoke spell we find would be great. How about a Stoke the Flames? Clear the Scoundrel. And our opponent explodes as we'll get to untap our double flood caller, giving them a 3 extra power, and that's over 20 damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand, I would say. Got the turn 1 shock if we're up against an aggro deck. Turn 2 mentor, setting up a 1 mana pearl of wisdom, 1 mana robbery. Those are all good. Although it seems like we're up against Golgari mid range. So we can expect quite a bit of removal and other disruption 
which will make it harder to combo off. If Shieldred shows up, that can also be very difficult for us to beat since it's 5 toughness, so it survives Stoke the Flames. And it punishes card draw, which is what we're all about. Alright, so no surprise our opponent has removal for Mentor. Could cast another one. Could also cast a Robbery just to try and hit my Land Drop for the turn, which might be better, discarding a Shock. And that's good. So next turn I can go Mentor into Pearl of Wisdom, which is pretty efficient. And then we're slowly building up towards a turn where we can try to combo with Storm Splitter. A rookie points towards more of a beatdown deck than a more controlling Golgari deck, which is probably a good thing for us, but it does mean our opponent's going to apply quite a bit of pressure. Uh, still liking Mentor into Pearl of Wisdom, probably shouldn't have played my land yet. And that's the reason why. Um, still okay trading here. Opponent's unlikely to block. Opponent sadly does have shieldreds, so yeah, that's kind of what I feared. Take or draw. So we do not have enough burn to finish off shieldreds, if they block the mentor, maybe. If I go for Storm Splitter, I can still play a 1 mana Pearl of Wisdom and then Convoke Stoke the Flames, taking out the Rookie and get a couple attacks in, but it's not going to be lethal. So what I could also do is play Storm Splitter, pass, hoping they cannot remove it, and then a turn after we have a better chance of fully comboing off. But if our opponent removes Storm Splitter, then uh, our chances kind of go up in flames. So it's a tough call to make. Our opponent hasn't had a great opportunity to cast another removal spell, so they could easily have another in hand. Our opponent attacking us for a damage next turn also means I'm limited in how many cards I can draw, since otherwise Shieldred kills me. So maybe it is just a Pearl of Wisdom looking for another removal spell. Alright, found another Stoke the Flames and a Valley Floodcaller, that's also important. So if I play Floodcaller... I still can Convoke a Stoke the Flames, so that might be the move here. And then Mentor could trade for Shieldreds. Our opponent's going to play it safe and keep Shieldred back. So I can still flash in Floodcaller, Convoke Stoke the Flames just to take out the Rookie. Or I can f take 4 and then keep Stoke the Flames for next turn, hoping that they cannot remove my Floodcaller or my uh, Storm Splitter next turn, which might honestly be the way to go. I'll essentially be at 5, so I can still cast one card draw spell that draws two cards without dying, which is maybe all I need. And then, uh, yeah. Opponent can still gain two with Shieldred, thanks to the clue token. Well, let's see if they have removal left. I hope not. If it's cut down, it's fine. I can still save the Floodcaller. A Tail Swipe, that's actually perfect. Take out the Rookie in response. Although one fewer stoke the flames to try and combo off next turn, I suppose. Take my draw step, meeting of minds. So yeah, it's gonna come down to the wire. But uh, step one, storm splitter. Meeting of minds, tapping everything for convoke. I'll be at one, so can't draw any more cards. And then Stoke the Flames Sentinel attack. Is that going to be good enough? I highly doubt it. Opponents will still have Shieldred as a blocker. I will get two more Storm Splitters, which will be uh, two power each. These go up to three power, so let's see. That's ten plus another 
8 is 18. Yeah, so whether I go Sentinel or go Face, I don't think it matters. If I had one more spell here to cast, we might have gotten there since then. We get to uh, go off even more with the Storm Splitters. So really any spell might have done it, as long as it doesn't draw cards, I guess. Which does uh, limit the number of cards we can cast. Although Highway Robbery we can still decline to draw cards, can just cast it to trigger our various abilities. And yeah, opponent falls to one. And uh, that'll do it, so a very close one here, facing our nemesis Shieldred. But we still made a game out of it. Opponent animates Restless Cottage. And that'll do it. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. We've got our early plays lined up. We've got plenty of card draw, so hopefully Storm Splitter will show up at some point. Turn one planes and Swordmaster, so a red white mice. Okay, for now, probably still play the mentor. Next turn play one mana, Pearl of Wisdom. No attacks. So we are kind of the control deck in this matchup, although currently don't have any removal. Manifold Mouse is a good one. Can give double strike. And we take four. So step one, Pearl of Wisdom. And we did find a shock, that's good. So can shock the Manifold Mouse and still cast Robbery. And then Trainer can be a way to refuel next turn, or we can level up our talent. But we're also getting in for a healthy amount here, so... Maybe we're the beat town after all. Mabel is gonna pump all mouse creatures. But her opponent hangs back. Stoke the flames, a great draw. So if I play the trainer, I can still pretty easily stoke the flames. Probably didn't want to tap both islands there, but that's okay. Find a meeting of minds. Okay, so we could meeting of minds tapping the trainer. Still doesn't really punch past Mabel. If I stoke the flames, Mabel, then these grow into two twos. So then I do have a reasonable attack. Yeah, I guess that's good enough for now. And then next turn we can draw. So a slightly more aggressive curve than I'm used to with this deck, but shows that... Uh, Sometimes you can beat the beat down as well. Don't always have to get there with a combo. Might of the Meek grows Hardfire Hero. And a Lava Spur Boots. But yeah, opponent explodes, so they feel like they're already too far behind. And yeah, seeing the meeting of minds in hand, I can understand why. Next turn we can pretty easily cast it, have some mana left over, grow our creatures. Opponent's kind of forced to chum block already. Plus, if we find any other spell we can cast, they're probably dead. And then eventually leveling up the talent, getting back a Stoke the Flames can also get the job done. Alright, so we got to see our Blue Rats Otter Storm deck in action. Definitely a little bit on the jankier side of things, but when it finally goes off it's a thing of beauty. So definitely a lot of fun to play. Wouldn't recommend it for the rank ladder necessarily, but if you happen to have the cards, certainly give it a try. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.